Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, lecture series of engineering mechanics. And in this lecture, we will be discussing the aspects of dynamics. So from this lecture onwards, we'll be discussing the second part of this engineering mechanics, which is also known as dynamics of the bodies. So we all know that bodies are made up of particles. So we can say all these things for for the particles or for the bodies that will be applied to all of them. So <clears throat> uh, it's important here to understand that the dynamics involves the motion of the bodies also. So the forces, moments that were being applied to the body is there now when the body is moving. In the earlier part, we have discussed in statics that the body was not moving. So, the overall motion of the body was zero. However, in dynamics, the body is actually moving and all the forces, active forces are being applied on the body and we have to determine the behavior of the body. What will be the behavior of the body? when these forces are being applied. So these forces are unbalanced forces and they will make the body actually move. So uh, the relationships are used mainly to determine the trajectory of a golf ball. For example in this, so a golf ball, this person actually hits the golf ball and the golf ball moves and go somewhere. So this is the trajectory. This may be the trajectory um, traveled by the golf ball. So the golf ball is moving and some uncontrolled unbalanced forces applied when he hits the golf ball. In a similar way this is one of kind of a satellite which used to rotate around the earth and uh, these satellites are moving and they are also being propelled by different forces. So these are all the examples like the aircrafts are being propelled by different forces and they are also moving. So these all examples comes under the heading of dynamics part. So their behavior is important. See how important their behavior becomes when the aircraft is actually flying or there are certain other examples also like a truck, a high momentum truck is about to collide with some other body. So these aspect becomes very important. And there are some field variables that we will we'll be looking when we will be discussing about engineering dynamics. Dynamics involves two major aspects. The one is a study of kinematics. And another is the study of kinetics. In kinematics, the study of the geometry of motion of the body is studied. It involves displacement, it involves velocity, it also involves acceleration along with the time. Although it does not involve any particular reference, that means a particular reference is not required. Like for example, this aircraft is moving. So I am mostly interested, if I am mostly interested in obtaining the displacement and through displacement I can obtain velocity and <coughs> by, by doing the double differentiation I can uh, also include the, in, um, obtain the acceleration. So these all things are obtained for the aircraft. This is the study of geometry of motion and this is termed as kinematics and this is not with reference to any particular coordinate system and it also involves the causes of motion what are the major causes of motion kinetics however involves the study of relations existing between the different external forces that are being applied on the body or may have been induced by the body however due to the atmospheric conditions like for example the drag has not been induced the thrust is induced by the body however the drag and the lift has been controlled by the 
aircraft mechanism. So, kinetics actually is the study of relations existing between the forces acting on the body, the mass of the body and what is its relation with respect to its motion. So, all the relations between these forces and relation towards the moving object is studied in the kinematics. Kinematics predict the motion caused by the different forces or different applied forces and that forces actually gives us the desired motion. So these are the two different fields of dynamics. So first of all you will be studying about different field variables involved in kinematics <coughs> that is displacement, velocity and acceleration of the bodies. So uh, if you see a particular pattern the pattern along which a body moves. That is very important actually because when a body is moving, its movement has to be described according to a certain relationship. Now, uh, in this case, this, this, this truck or a luggage car, something is there, is moving on this road and it's moving linearly along a straight line. So, such type of motion is termed as a rectilinear motion. So, it may termed to be involved as the particular position of the object or a body and we can obtain a velocity and an acceleration of these bodies. So, when a body moves along a particular line, along a certain fixed line, this is termed as a rectilinear motion. Another way to describe a motion is a curvilinear motion. When, for example, an aircraft flies, you know, mostly uh, some jumbo jet aircrafts or a military aircraft do not usually used to fly along a certain path. They used to maneuver very frequently. Or, for example, a motion of a, um, like for example, a motion of a, a mosquito may be termed as a some somewhere close to a curvilinear motion that also involves the position velocity and acceleration of the of the body or of the mosquito and this is mainly involves when it is moving along a curved line so this is some kind of a curvature this is some kind of a curvature when such examples are there we need to <coughs> apply the rules of the curvilinear motion of the body. Now you know what is a rectilinear motion, what is a curvy, curvilinear motion. Uh, as I said, the rectilinear motion, in the rectilinear motion the body actually moves along a straight line. Like for example in this case, body is moving along a straight line. So the position coordinates becomes important. What was your initial coordinate and what is your final coordinate. This was the initial coordinate and this was the final coordinate or the moved coordinate. It may be positive, it may be negative. Okay, The motion of the particle is actually a position coordinate for a particle along a certain time value. So the time is a major factor here. In all the dynamics part, you will be interested to knowing a particular time because the position is also obtained with respect to time, the velocity is obtained with respect to time and something very similar to acceleration also. So time has a very important uh, <coughs> role to play in, in engineering dynamics. So a position here may be expressed as a function of time. So we can express the, uh, the position in a function of time. Like for example, in this case, the position x is equal to 6 t square minus t cube. In a similar way, this equation may be obtained through a particular graph. When we plot, a, plot this equation on a graph, we may obtain something like this. This shows the movement of the body with respect to time. 
and these are the different points traced by the body when the body is moving. Sometimes it is called a particle is moving. So this is actually the same thing, a body or a particle is the same thing. So these are the traversed particular traverse line or the path taken by the particle or a body when it is moving. So it has different position at each time interval. At this time interval, it has different position. At this time interval, it has different position. So the movement of the body or this path of the body can be expressed as a particular function which is a function of position coordinates, time coordinates. Okay. And if we need to obtain the velocity of the particle, as we know that the velocity is the, the change in the obtained position. So this was the one position of the particle and this was the another position of the particle. This is the difference in these two positions with respect to difference in the time. We all know that this is the velocity. Change in the position divided by the change in time. So if you apply the limit as time t tends to 0, this will become a differential. We all know that. And there may be an instantaneous velocity which may be positive or negative. Instantaneous velocity is that particular velocity at a particular point. Like for example, is this point you will be having one velocity v1. Similarly, at this point we will be having another velocity v2. Okay. As I said, there is a when we apply a limit to this, we can obtain this as a derivative dx by dt and dx is the derivative or dx by dt is the derivative or a slope at each and every point of this body of this path of this body okay this is the position derivative so if we have this equation of this uh, movement of this path equation of the path actually can be derived and the velocity can be obtained just by differentiating this equation. So this is the velocity in terms of time stamp. In a very similar way, we can op also obtain the acceleration of the body. So acceleration is the difference in the change in velocity with respect to different time stamps. Okay. So we can actually term and define the acceleration also. So acceleration is uh, dv by dt, we all know that and uh, for the in terms of position coordinate it is d square x by dt square. This is also very evident. Okay, this all you know actually. So this is mostly a revision part actually going on. So if we have uh, a time, an equation of the position coordinates x equals to 60 square minus t by simply differentiating if we can obtain velocity and by simply op differentiating the velocity equation we can obtain the accelerations and at particular time stamps like a time stamp of 2 seconds we can obtain the position velocity of these equations so just by using one particular equation of the position we can obtain the acceleration we can obtain the velocity and we can obtain different time stamp at different uh, put, uh, th these different field variables at different time stamps. So this is actually important in dynamics when the path is traced at each location what will be the position, what will be the velocity and acceleration of the body or a particle. So this is important in terms of kinematics. Uh, what is true about the, this is one kind of a conceptual quiz which says that what is true about the kinematics of particle. The velocity of particle is always positive, may be, may not be, that's not true, really. The velocity of particle is equal to the slope of the position time graph. This is very obvious. The velocity is actually the slope. As I said, that the velocity here is actually the slope at a particular points. So these are the slope points. And these slope points give me 
of velocity okay so obviously this is the b part the third part if the position of the particle is zero then the velocity must be zero not not necessary if the velocity is zero then its acceleration must be not necessary so this becomes the okay the b the b part is there the velocity of particle is equal to the slope of position time graph then we have another kind of a motion uh, a uniform rectilinear motion something very similar to what ideas newton gave actually so especially during a free fall a parachutist reaches a particular velocity known as a terminal velocity and when when her weight actually equals the drag force the weight of the body or a weight of this parachutist actually equals the drag force drag force is applied from here okay drag force is applied from here and the weight is going in this direction so drag force you can you can understand the drag force drag force as a is a normal component on the body and the body is actually placed on uh, this might you have you, you might have learned this in, in the chapter of friction the body is placed in this position and this is the weight of the body then since it is being placed on this on this uh, on this object or this um, this thing then there will be one normal component existing originating from this so this normal actually is somewhat uh, maybe kind you can you can relate this normal as a to a drag force and this happens especially when when people used to do a paragliding so when people used to do a paragliding this actually forms a uniform rectilinear motion and um, due to this equivalent drag force the people can be actually used to paraglide uh, on the upper atmosphere uh, or most precisely known as stratosphere uh, in that actually region because in that region the body's weight is somewhat very much close to or equal to the drag force so till the time the weight of the body and the drag force is same the the person will be or the object will be hanging out just like that however as the drag force reduces the person actually goes down 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 and further and then he can use his parachute and then can safely lands on the earth so if the motion is in a straight line this is a this is kind of a uniform rectilinear uniform rectilinear motion okay so for a particle in uniform rectilinear motion the acceleration is uh, is zero definitely and the velocity is constant because velocity the earlier and the afterwards velocity in both these cases is almost negligible is almost negligible as the weight of the object is actually counterfeitly balancing the drag force balancing through the drag force so velocity is constant so that becomes that means that acceleration is zero and we have some important equations coming up due to that these are some other examples of uh, uniformly accelerated that linear motion so if such kind of motion is there when we have a constant acceleration or constant velocities we can use a newton's three newton's laws of equations that we have we have three newton's equations this can be very easily recognized from the earlier 12th standard uh, physics uh, courses if you might have learned that velocity v is equals to the initial velocity plus at and the uh, position equals to initial position plus initial velocity times time that particular instant plus half at square okay and this is the another three equation so these are the newton's laws of motion and this should be um, uh, remembered actually while especially while using the accelerated or uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion another kind of a motion especially happens when there are certain bodies are connected towards each other okay several parts or several particles are, uh, or several bodies may be um, may be connected or interlinked like in this example uh, <clears throat> this is uh, one of the examples you might have seen <coughs> 
in a sugar mill um, in a sugar mill you might have seen some lipase which is actually being lifted to a certain location and then through these pulleys the sugar is refined uh, so this is one of the examples in sugar cane industry also you might have seen if you, if you might have seen uh, a paper um, newspaper printing machines so they also has conveyor belts which are actually very much similar to works like these pulleys where one weight is actually being lifted and other another weight is being pulled down however remember that the overall weight of this string is constant the overall weight of this string is constant so they are independent however they are they link together that means their motion is in, independent of each other however they are linked together so how to solve such problems if we have been given any particular such type of problem and one motion is applied to any one of these members how to solve them so let's see this the position of the particle may depend on its position of one or the other particle like for example in this case this is xa the distance from this to this or this may be the distance of this spring uh, of this string okay this string has a distance of xa consider this as a curvature over this and this string has the distance xb so this string and this string is string are basically almost same because if you consider this part actually also this will be equal to this and this will be same so overall length of these two are same which is xb and overall length of this to this is same which is xa and the sum of them xa plus 2xb which is 1xb and second xb is equal to constant constant means that the overall length of this spring uh, overall length of this string is constant overall length of this rope is constant that means this rope cannot stretch or it, this rope cannot compress so the length remains same that means constant and why we are saying this as one degree of freedom because it has two variables one variable xa this may change independently with xb sometimes the xa will increase so xb will decrease so the overall equation will remain same and what is the degree of freedom degree of freedom is the number of variables minus 1 number of variables minus 1 why this is minus 1 because you have to constrain a body n is the number of variables so this is one variable this is two variable these are two variables so if you have to push these two you have to constrain one variable then you can have one degree of freedom if you have to push this one you have to constrain this one okay that's why it's known as one degree of freedom because it has two variables and you have to constrain any one of the variable so this is n minus 1 this is a very generic equation of degree of freedom of a system okay in another example we take this okay let me rub this first so in another example we have strings we have actually three strings so this is the length of xa so this is xa and this is xa we have two xa we have b so this is 1 b xb xb 2 xb and we have 1 xc so 2 xa 2 xb and 1 xc this is equal to constant the length of the rope is constant it cannot increase or decrease and this has two degrees of freedom why because we have three variables so n minus 1 that means 3 minus 1 is two degrees of freedom so the independence is along the two degrees of freedom okay so we can solve these problems like this if we need a velocity 
profile or a velocity equation we can differentiate these equation the position equations can be differentiated and obtain the velocity equation in a similar way it can be double differentiated to obtain the acceleration equation uh, this is one uh, problem being given to you a slider block a moves to the left with a constant velocity of 6 meter per second a moves to the left the constant velocity of 6 meter per second determine the velocity of block b this block this block is actually interlinked so how will you calculate the velocities so first of all i have to choose one kind of a coordinate system x y coordinate system i'll choose and then from that x y i have to let's measure these distances okay choosing the coordinate system and now we will measure the distances so from this this is y b the length of this string a length of or actually the position of this uh, body uh, b from this horizontal and the position of this body from this vertical so these are the two locations of these two bodies this length is constant so what will be your equation or constraint equation so this is one variable one xa and this is one xp two xp and three xp these are the three string lengths plus these string length i don't know how, how that is you can give a number to it also okay but does this does not actually involves in the problem because this is same you can increase or decrease this this will not in, this will not actually hinders your solution this will remain the same so rather than giving it a variable we have said that it's it's a constant equal to the total length of the string you can differentiate this to obtain the velocity you can differentiate this to obtain the acceleration so we have differentiated it to find the velocity of vp and the uh, VA is given to us when we differentiate XA we get VA VA is 6 and this is 3 VB so we can obtain very easily the velocity of the body VB okay uh, another kind of a motion let's discuss this one a curvilinear motion so till now we have discussed a rectilinear motion now we'll discuss the another motion which we have discussed earlier in example what is a curvilinear motion and how the position velocity and acceleration will be affected in a curvilinear motion like for example a ball or a car undergoes a particular curvilinear motion this is related to a curve also known as a curvilinear motion the curvilinear motion actually involves the tracing of the particle so this is the curve on which the particle needs to be traced so the original location of particle is p and then the second location of the particle is p dash so particle has moved a distance ds okay or a vector dr to this location p dash so from a certain coordinate system if i am tracing the particle so my distance or a position vector was r when the particle was at p and the position vector is r dash when the particle reaches p dash so the time has actually also increased from t to t dash okay so now how the velocities are changing so r becomes r dash so r has actually changed so your velocity actually becomes dr by dt and what about uh, the particular or instantaneous velocity on this curve so this will be ds by dt what is ds actually ds is the linear distance of this curve from one position to another the initial position to final position so this is a particular instantaneous velocity and we have applied a limit to it that's why we will be able to perform a differentiation so this is a particular velocity 
on this curve. This will be another velocity. This will be another velocity. So the velocity expressions actually remains the same as curvilinear motion. Only the difference comes that in a rectilinear motion we have a position coordinate x1 and x2. So the dif difference between x1 x2 by difference between t1 t2. So that was our velocity. In this case we have a radius or r to see the change in the curve. So this is the position vector r. So this is r. Here another circle will be there through this curve and here another circle will be there through this curve. So r is different on this curve. This is r dash and this is r. So this is the position vector the difference between the two r's. Okay. In a similar way, we can obtain the acceleration also by changing the velocity. So the velocity on this curve path will always be tangential to the curvature. Just very important point to remember is that on this curvature, the velocity vector will be always tangential. And we will see in the later part of these slides that there are there is a particular component which is actually tangential, which is called as tangential velocity. However, the acceleration component is inside it. And we will see again later in this part of the curve, later on this, um, you know, on this lecture, later part, that there will be two accelerations. One will be tangential to this and another will be along this curve, along the center of this curve, which will be called as normal acceleration. So, thus, the resultant of these two acceleration is actually this component of acceleration A. And this component of acceleration may not be exactly tangential to this path. However, the velocity vector will always be tangential to this curvature or the curve. Okay. And the rectangular components of the velocity and acceleration, we all know that. What is the rectangular component in the x, y and z coordinates? So, if we have a position vector which is defining any particular body and the position vector is r, then the position vector itself will be having the components x, i, y, j and z, k. This is the, these are the components of the position vector where this is the scalar component and this is the unit vector. Scalar component along y and unit vector. Something similar here. And the second part is to obtain the velocity vector from this. So if we differentiate this, we can very easily obtain the velocity vector from this position vector. And if we diff double differentiate this, then we can obtain the acceleration vector from the same position vector or velocity vector. Okay, the velocity vector will be differentiated only once, the position vector will be differentiated twice. Now, another thing is um, a motion which is relative to a certain frame in a particular translation. This is something very similar to a relative motion actually. Motion which is related to one motion and relation to the another body. When we have two bodies, how the relation will be working? Uh, let, let me give you an example. For example, you are you are sitting beside a, a lake or a sea. You are sitting here. This is the this is the sea and you are sitting here. Okay. This is the water. You are actually sitting here. I don't know how this is sitting or standing but you are you are positioning here actually okay and there is one ship and this ship is moving in certain location okay and your one one of your friend is there on this ship okay one of this one of your friend is there on the ship 
so as the ship is moving from this direction to another location like for example this is the one location of the ship and then after the movement the another location of the ship is this and your friend is still there okay so your relative position according to this according to you the ship is moving from one location to another location however according to your friend according to your friend your ship is not moving actually because he is moving with the ship so relatively according to you the ship is moving according to him the ship is moving actually he is he is he is moving from one point to another but since his own position is not moving so he may consider it that the ship is not moving because the initial and the final his his initial and final location is same so the body may not be moving so there is a relation between the two one is a relation between this vector to this vector another relation between these two vectors and the third relation between this vector and this vector okay so you have two relationship one is this vector another vector is this vector okay you have two relationship one when the position of the ship is at time t1 when the position of the ship is at time t2 however there is one relation between these two ships and this is the relative position from this location to this location this is called a fixed time moving constant and this is a moving frame constant so we'll be discussing this something very similar happens here like for example this was the location of the ship and then after certain time the ship actually moves to this location so this coordinate system x y and z is a fixed coordinate system because i am beneath the sea i am standing just beside the sea at a fixed point however this is a moving coordinate system because a point has moved to b and since the coordinate system or your friend is itself in the ship so it is moving with the ship so the coordinate system or a frame is inside the ship so since the ship is moving so your coordinate system is also moving so that relationship is rb so one is ra marked by your position when it is at a and another is rb marked through your position when the location is at b however the relation between a and b is rpa we'll be looking towards this through a, this simple equation that means the rb the position from a to b or the position vector rb will be equal to ra plus rba the relative position movement from a to b so ra is this location and then rb why this is being added because if your friend wants to move to b so what path he will take he will have to first move to a and then he have he has to move to b so you have to take this and add up this so add both of them and you will be getting rb the location from your fixed point to this moved point so if your friend if this person actually wants to move from o to b he has to follow this path so this is the motion relative to a particular frame and similarly this is a position this can be differentiated to obtain the velocity of this velocity of this movement and double differentiated to obtain the acceleration of this movement okay now important to obtain important to observe the tangential and normal components and something very important actually this happens very occasionally and uh, like for example this uh, this is a curvilinear uh, curvilinear motion but there may be certain things like for example he is moving very fast along this so there will be one normal component which will be along this path and there will be one tangential component along this one 
Okay, this train is taking a very sharp turn in some, I think, mountains. And this is a very funny kind of a <coughs> playing prop. And uh, through this, uh, I think this is some kind of a train which actually uh, moves on to this, maybe seen somewhere in Europe. And such type of uh, uh, sharp turn, this, these are very much famous to take some particular sharp turns along this rail. One of the common examples that I used to prefer to, um, to see about this tangential and normal components is the movement of the disc. You might have seen a, a DVD player and inside the DVD player, when your DVD player actually gets malfunctioned and your uh, that, that repair person actually came and removes the upper top, this was your DVD. And this DVD was actually moving. Sorry, let's. This this is not a, a, at all a DVD actually. I'm using actually a mouse. Uh, this becomes a problem. Sometimes. So this is your DVD, and this is actually rotating at an angle omega, which is called as angular velocity. Okay. So there is one velocity which is tangential to this. This is called tangential component and one velocity which is along this which is called normal um, component. Okay, So this is a tangential component, this is a normal component. When we are going to use tangential normal component times this, when we will be having an object which has a very small thickness when we are talking only in the plane like in the case of a DVD. The DVD has almost negligible thickness. So, a rectangular coordinate system will not be applicable to it. Okay. So, in this case, the path is mostly circular in nature. So, every time he moves, we will be having a tangential component and a normal component. And remember that at each and every point, the tangential velocity will be changing. And since the tangential velocity is changing, this changing velocity is known as angular velocity. The velocity is in and this is one velocity and this is another velocity. V1, V2. Difference between the two is angular. The theta obtained between them. And something very similar happens here. Though this may not be exactly circular in nature, but there will be a tangential velocity here also. And a normal velocity here. This will be a tangential velocity and this will be normal velocity. Along this, we will be having a tangential acceleration and a normal acceleration. We need to obtain the components along this because we will be having a velocity as a whole. So, in these cases, it is important to obtain the components. So, this will be a tangential component and this will be a normal component. So, velocity obtained by the resultant of these two will be known as the perfect velocity. In a similar way, we will be having a tangential acceleration and a normal acceleration. And the acceleration obtained by the resultant of these two will be your actual acceleration. So, we'll look towards this and we have already explained you what is this actually. Uh, okay, So, we will be discussing this. So, this will be, will be a velocity, definitely a tangential velocity. So, tangential velocity is Vt times et. Remember that this et is a unit vector. I am not taking here i, j, k because i will be along x, j will be along y, k will be along z. So, what to take for any random case? So, for a random case, we take a unit vector known as e. e is a unit vector here. This e signifies only a direction. So, e will be v upon vt. vt here is magnitude, v is a vector. So, v vector composed of magnitude, vt velocity and et the direction. So, v vt can be uh, here as I know, as, as you can see this is the position vector. Velocity vector will be having et or a unit magnitude along this line and a unit magnitude 
En will be along this line. This T and N means that this is along the tangential direction. En means along the normal direction. And the rho is the radius of the curvature. Radius of only this curvature, remember. Radius of only this curvature. This curvature which will be making a circle. Okay. So this will be only the radius. If you want to define the acceleration, you have to differentiate this. When you differentiate this, you will be having these two variables. So this will be a product differentiation. Differentiation by a product rule. So try to take a product rule and uh, this will be dv by dt et plus when you differentiate this, you will be applying some small considerations here to obtain v square by rho and I request you to please do that by yourself. Just consider that rho is the distance from here to here okay and ds is the distance when you move sorry when you move your location to this this will be your ds theta involved between just try to do this and you will be able to under, able to obtain the acceleration of this component and remember that the acceleration here is dv by dt so this is the acceleration or a tangential component of the acceleration and this will be the normal component of the acceleration so in the tangent so the velocity case will be having only the tangential component there will be no normal component of the velocity why because the normal component will not exist you have you might have seen a centripetal velocity or a centripetal acceleration so what will be the centripetal acceleration will be dv by dt the centripetal one sorry centrifugal one the centripetal one will be inside so rho square uh, v square by rho will be the centripetal and uh, dv by dt will be the centrifugal component so just remember that the velocity will only be tangential there will be no normal velocity okay and acceleration will be having two components at so this will be at1 dv by dt and v square by rho will be an and they all are along the position uh, unit vector at and en okay this is one problem in which uh, a car is taking a very sharp turn the radius of this turn is given here the velocity of the car is also given and what is being asked it has been asked that the car actually applies a brake causing the car to slow down at a constant rate remember that whenever a brake is applied that means the velocity is reduced the moment velocity is reduced we will be having deceleration there is one thing known as acceleration which is increase in speed try to accelerate used to say that na, while driving a car or driving a motorcycle try to accelerate that means increase the speed and try to decelerate that means decrease the speed that means decrease the speed from the current position so this is the slowing down trying to break out the or trying to break the automobile so when the automobile or this car is actually brakes are applied then the velocity is reduced and there will be a deceleration this will be along this direction this is deceleration direction and after some seconds that means after some 8 seconds what will be its speed a speed is given sorry 45 miles per hour is given so obtain the acceleration of the automobile immediately after the brakes are applied so obtain the acceleration or in fact he wants to know the deceleration so how will you do that very very simple now we know that we have to obtain the don't look to this solution just look at it we have to obtain the acceleration okay you have to obtain the acceleration component so as i know that the acceleration component 
will be having acceleration resultant will be having two component an the normal component which is along the diameter and the tangential component which is along the tangential and remember that the tangential component will be against the velocity because this is deceleration so one component will be here and one component will be here so i need to obtain at sorry at and i need to obtain an the at is dv by dt at is dv by dt so dv by dt or delta v by delta t delta t is 8 seconds and delta v is first we have this velocity and after the brakes we have this velocity trying to take the same velocity units so we will be having this much amount of at or the tangential deceleration and what will be your normal component try to obtain through v square by rho and you will be getting it and you can take the resultant of the two and you can obtain the acceleration component remember that as i said the acceleration component may not be overall tangential or may not be exactly through the normal if the tangential component is zero then it will be along the normal okay so the resultant will be an at some random direction and you can also find the angle of this at component because this at component is important because it is actually decelerating the car so it is at an angle of alpha 48.8 degrees so i hope you understand this problem this was a very simple problem whenever a car or any object actually moves and takes some sharp turn there will be one component along that we will be having that velocity and acceleration component along this this is known as tangential component and one will be along the diameter in another case we have another problem in which this is uh, a centrifugal cab which is having a tangential acceleration and the acceleration equation is given time is in seconds acceleration is in meter per seconds so we have to define the total acceleration of the cab after some time 10 seconds so um, this is very looks very simple actually again simple we will take the top view and from the top view we will see and this will be the movement so what this will be the movement will be having epsilon t along the tangential and normal along this the diameter has been given so you know what to do you have to obtain the velocity and acceleration so to obtain the acceleration we have two components again to obtain that at is given to us we need to obtain the time time we can obtain through the velocity equation and we can obtain the velocity from here and then we can obtain the normal acceleration normal is new uh, um, vt square by rho or r that is same so you can obtain an and at both of them you can obtain and then you can take the magnitude and all of them you know how to do this looks very simple problem actually so these problems has been shown to you so that you got to know that whenever a problem has been given to you just try to find out what he is trying to ask he is trying to asking for a particular component or trying to um, get the overall component from you and remember whenever you obtain the overall component of the expression try to make a diagram a diagram of the component so this is will be the an and this will be the at and try to find the resultant from this it's very important that you should plot this parallelogram a quadrilateral this will be the resultant acceleration r or this is the resultant acceleration a mag and this will be the tangential and this will be the normal then after that we have some radial and transverse components also we also call them as a cylindrical coordinates okay coordinates obtained by the cylinder when a curve is moving on the cylinder we have r theta coordinate system so by knowing the distance 
to the aircraft and the angle of the radar aircraft controllers can track the aircraft so these are the radars and these are the aircraft and some of the examples like this but i used to give something very similar example of a uh, cylindrical coordinate system this is a cylinder for you and this coordinate system actually gives you an r theta coordinate system this will needs to find the radius r and radius theta with respect to theta what will be your radius r so this is also known as r theta coordinate system like for example a fire truck ladder can rotate as well as extend so this has to actually move also and also count the rotation or the movement or angular movement also needs to be counted the motion of the end of a ladder can be analyzed using radial and transverse component so this is the radial component this is the transverse component okay we we'll look towards it at in this case again this is a part of a curvilinear motion okay not a rectilinear rectilinear motion this is a part of a curvilinear motion so the point p is being tracked from this original which is at an angle of theta the vector is r r er r r er so r is the magnitude of this er is the unit vector along this so er is along this unit vector and perpendicular to this you have e theta so any movement here will be changing the theta also and changing the r also these are the cylindrical coordinates so very easy to obtain the particle velocity and acceleration just differentiate it using product rule you'll be getting the velocity and differentiating it again you'll be getting the acceleration so the important thing is here that the velocity can be obtained the tangential velocity is this or radial velocity is this and the the another uh, transverse velocity is this r theta dot so you have to remember that that this is the transverse velocity theta velocity and this is the radial velocity r dot and similarly you have radial acceleration r double dot minus r theta dot square and you have transverse acceleration component also these are the two acceleration component so these are the th actually different coordinate system along with some of the examples has been given to you in this lecture so that in the coming up lectures you will become much prepared and you will be having a good knowledge and a good introduction about all these different coordinate systems different ways how to obtain the velocity and these position vectors what are their components so that actually a further study on dynamics can be can be done so i hope this uh, this video would be informative to you and um, this would help you to give a good introduction about different coordinate systems how they actually work and in which situations they are actually required so in the next lecture we will be discussing further important aspects of dynamics thank you for now